How's it going everybody? It is Saturday. Well, I think it's just before lunchtime. I was on the mower this morning um, mowing the back pasture. Um, it's pretty wet still but with a mower like that you can mow in the pouring rain. It really doesn't matter. Um, I wanted to include that. A lot of you guys watched my last video which was a mowing video. Um, that was a fun video to make. A lot of you guys are interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, you guys own machinery. Um, that's the reason why I, I wanted that versus a zero turn is that mower will mow in water, you know, soaking wet. It doesn't matter. Um, that thing will climb some serious inclines, usually more steep than I'm willing uh, to do. Now, yes, it's flat here, but our ditches are really deep. I like to mow my front ditches. Uh, it looks nice when you pull into the yard, keeps the long grass down and, um, so I mow the ditches and that thing, the back end will walk out a little bit, but you can mow sideways. You can't go up and down because when you hit the bottom, the mower bottoms out, but you can mow sideways on quite the incline. Even if it's wet, it'll still do it. And uh, so that's the, the main reason why I have that mower. But it started pouring rain, so I went in the house and now it's sunny and nice out. So I don't know what the weather's doing today. Might hop back on the mower after we're done here. Okay, so today's video, um, I just got this back in the mail. I got a box right here, friends. And uh, this is Buckins Pro Mac 850, the one we just sent him, and uh, it's torn down. It's true, friends, Buckin blew that saw up. If you haven't seen, he made a video last week, I believe, week before, and uh, this saw let go. We weren't sure why, so what we actually did, uh, I called him and he took the saw apart on a video chat with me and we looked it over. It's kind of interesting, um, not 100% sure what happened. I have my ideas, but again, when a saw pops, you never really know. Uh, it's nice to have a good operator and, and you can discuss what happened, so maybe you can prevent it from happening again. These old saws, friends, when you port them, uh, you're playing with fire. Yeah, old old parts, old plating. You never really know what they're going to do. That's kind of why I like doing them. It, it keeps me super vigilant to make sure every piece is as good as it can be. And uh, I didn't turn this thing up crazy, crazy warm yet because I wanted to see. Well, now we're back to square one. Um, I'm not too sure what happened. So anyhow, friends, I'm going to bring you guys in close. Let's have a look at the damage. It's not as bad as it could have been. Buckins shut the saw down right away and and saved it. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I can save the cylinder, but let's have a look at it together and we'll see the damage and let's talk about it. Um, sometimes saws blow up, friends, and if they do, it's nice to know what happened and kind of get a read on the situation. So um, let's have a look up close. I'll show you the piston first and then the cylinder and I'm going to try and I'm just going to hit the cylinder right now with some scotch Bright real carefully. Sometimes it's hard to see the damage. Sometimes it looks worse than it is. Um, 850 parts are getting to be hard to find. Cylinders and pistons. This is an A cylinder, I believe. And an A piston. Let me see here. I believe this piston is marked. Now, I think something come off, but I'm not 100% sure. Where was this marked? I believe this is an A piston. Anyhow, friends, I'll bring you guys in and let's have a look at the damage. It's kind of sad, but if you're going to port saws, um, this kind of thing can and will happen. I'll bring you guys in. Let's have a look. Okay, he, he nicely packaged this up, tore it down, and uh, I kind of dug through it here, friends, just to see what the damage was. But he did a nice job of boxing this thing up. And hopefully, um, maybe we can put it back together. Okay, so I brought my 93 million candle power um, light here with me. I like the way he did this. He left the coil and everything on. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the piston. Okay, intake side looks fine. It's eaten some fines, but honestly, friends, that's how this looked when I put it back together. So, um, no trouble there. 
I want to show you guys when a saw blows up, what do I look for? Um, what, am I, what do I get concerned about? Okay, so first things first, the rings are not stuck. They move nice. Okay, a little scuffed up. The bottom of this was shiny when I built it. So again, Mac parts are hard to find and uh, it's interesting. Scorch pattern on this is, is kind of asymmetrical. But again, the spark plug comes in from the side. So, um, kind of interesting, right? Spark plug comes in from the side. Okay, actually this way. Okay, so you're going to have kind of a strange burn pattern because it's just the way these things are. Okay, the crown of the piston feels good. Again, you see all these fines. Um, Max don't filter the best, so it's just that's just how the old saws were. They ate a lot of sawdust. Again, I'm just looking. I see a little rub mark here. But again, it's not a high spot or anything. Look on the other side. This side looks okay. Now look at that, friends. This thing's trashed. But the funny thing is, the pistons are not worn. Or the, the rings are not worn. Okay, see that? There's no giant mark on the rings here. Okay, so kind of interesting. Here, I'll show you guys another piston. I'll dig through. I'll find a piston... Where the rings are damaged so you guys can see. Okay, this is an 044 MS440 type piston. Here's the intake side. Now, you can see the, the bottom of the skirt starting to wear right at the bottom. And look, there's a little chip here. Okay. Rings are stuck out on this side. But look at this side, friends. Okay. This saw was this saw was lean seized. The saw was run with a dull chain and cooked. See all the rings are filed straight. Okay, with the piston. So if you see a saw like this, it was lean seized. If it comes with a bar and chain, and the chain and bar are blue and just absolutely smoked, you found your culprit. Okay, and that's what happened to this saw. But this is a super heat-related, very hot, lean seizure. Okay, wrist pin starting to turn blue. This thing got really hot. Blue is always a sign of heat. Okay, look, it's all blued around here. Okay, so let's do a comparison. Similar, but different. Most of the wear is right here, okay? And it's too bad because, again, this piston is hard to come by. Okay? Weird, there's a mark right there, too. I don't know, I don't know what happened there. It's almost like something tapped the top of the piston. Okay? But look, again, the rings... They're only slightly scuffed, but not really bad, and they still move. Okay, next thing I'm going to look for, rod. It's not blue at all. It never got hot. Okay, this is that bottom end we built. No up and down play, really. These have a little shim sham. That's normal, side to side. These saws will have the slightest up and down play. Um, that's just how they are. Loose bearings like this tend to, as the, as the bearings get hotter and everything, that play comes out. Okay. Bearing. Completely fine. Okay. Again, this was just all loose in there. Everything looks good. I don't see. Bearing feels okay. There's good tension on the seal. This one is attached. Okay, same thing. This bearing did not get hot. 
There you go. Okay, oh. anyhow, friends. So I see nothing too untoward here. Now, okay, intake side. This saw has thin plating. Okay. See that? That's thin plating on the intake side. Now, I'm going to look at my videos, but I have a feeling that this is thinner now than it was. Okay, and what will happen... Remember, you're turning these saws up. This thing ran at substantially higher RPM in the cut than stock. Okay, you're putting more load on here. Okay, that's putting more thrust on this piston in the cylinder, and it'll start to polish that. Okay, but I don't see any chipped plating. There's no sharp spots. Like, everything feels A-OK. -okay. Now, let's look at the exhaust side. Okay, friends. So, what you guys see there, I'm just going to grab a screwdriver. This is all transfer, okay? Now, I don't know if the plating come off. Now... There's really no scoring over top of the exhaust port. But this stuff down here, I'm not too sure about, okay? So the only way to know if I could save this cylinder, and I would really like to, is to polish it, to try and take that transfer off. Yes, you can use acid. I don't like using acid because often, if you have a little score or something in the cylinder, the acid will go underneath and it'll take the plating right off. Okay, friends, so other than that, I see nothing wrong with this saw. So I'm going to chat with you guys here and see if I can scuff this up a little bit. Um, it was interesting. I talked to Bucket about this, and the day he was running it, he said it, it was showing a slight lean condition, okay? Um, he ran the saw three, four cuts, and it shut off and died, okay? saw was a little too lean and it got hot or maybe the plating's coming off the cylinder it's hard to say right so there's no blame here we are where we are and we're gonna keep going but uh when any one of my saws fails and it doesn't happen this is a rare occurrence um it does happen though friends if you're gonna port saws especially old saws you're gonna pop saws once in a while and uh if you do them for other people, um, you need to make sure that they're aware, you know, you're, this saw, this saw is like 40 years old, so, um, things are going to happen, but we are where we are, so I want to see what can we do with this. This is 180, um, emery, emery cloth. I'm literally just taking my finger in here and I'm just trying to get the high spots off. Now, friends, if you hurt the plating with with this and you're not pushing super hard, then the cylinder was already toast. Now, I think I know what happened, and I think I can see something. I'll have to clean this up so I can show you guys. And I also don't want to run a hone through here. I don't like honing chrome cylinders. For one reason and one reason only, uh, it's, it's hard on them. Nick is still all home till the cows come home, but chrome, eh. Some guys do it though, don't get me wrong, friends. Um, interesting. Okay, I'm gonna pause you guys here. I'm gonna work this for half an hour maybe and just see what I can do with it. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Okay, friends, I hope you guys can see this. Here's what killed this saw. Bakken being such a humble guy was like, I think I blew your saw up. It might have been a little too lean. He said it had a little stumble off idle, like a lean symptom. 
But he was just starting the saw. He made two or three cuts with it and the saw popped. Not typically a lean seizure. It takes longer than that usually. Well, I know what happened. These Macs are notorious for the plating coming off, okay? The plating come off here. And I bet you what happened. So the plating started to come off here. It peeled back. It got stuck in between the cylinder and the piston skirt. And it rubbed a hole in it. And it also rubbed a hole right here. Okay, so center the piston and slightly off to one side. Let's grab our piston here. Okay, let's grab our piston here is their corresponding marks. Right in the center is the, the majority of the damage and off to one side. Okay, so I have a feeling that all the plating come off here. It rolled up in here and stacked in here and this and it rubbed a hole. The plating's harder than the piston, right? It rubbed a hole here, and it probably went out the exhaust port. I'm going to find the muffler in all this uh, rigmarole here, if it's in this box. I haven't seen it yet. Let's look in the muffler. Maybe there's something stuck in there. Okay, friends. Well, the exhaust is not in here. <laughs> he probably snuck it away because he's going to bolt it on another 850. That would be good content, wouldn't it? I'd like to see how that pipe does with a stock saw. Okay, friends, so there you have it. We lost the saw. We live and we learn, right? Um, it happens. You'd prefer if it didn't, but this is the game we're playing. Let's do a wrap-up. Well, unfortunately, this thing's toast. Um, I'm glad I got to show that to you guys. Now, I've had, I've had two saws in here with a piston that was all gouged like this with no plating failure. Um... Usually a gouge like this though is something went through the saw or and or the plating's coming off. So um, the fact that these rings are not cooked at all makes me know that this thing wasn't run too lean. Of course, Bucket was thinking it was something he did and I was thinking it was something I did. And uh, that's the way it goes sometimes, friends. Um, if you guys go back when I built this, I did a playlist of this saw. I ran this saw for two months probably. These, these builds take a long time because you don't know what they're going to do and you just, you kind of want to see, for me anyways, I hate just building them and sending them out the door. I want to work them a bit and, and make notes and really see where my builds are for, for doing work, letting it idle, tipping it forward, you know, bucking with it, falling with it, limbing. I want to kind of know where the build, uh, where the build is. Now this one, I wanted to take it apart. I put about five tanks through this thing. And then I tore it all down like this to inspect the plating. These Macs are notorious. This era Mac are notorious for shedding plating. Um, and this one did it. I'm not sure why it did it. It was just one of those things. Um, there's no chips in the ports or anything. So the plating come off from the bottom and worked its way up. I don't think it came off from the top. Because if it came off from the top, you'd probably see a big ding in the ring. And these rings are not damaged, so... Them are the brakes, friends. Um, I don't know. I'll look around and see if I can find a donor saw with a good piston and cylinder or something like that. And if we can put this thing back together, we will definitely. Maybe we'll turn it up hotter next time. Uh, I'm not afraid to port these things warm. Um, I, I, I made this a good all-around saw. I think we can make it a little faster next time. So that's what we're going to do. Anyhow, friends. I'm kind of sad. I really like this saw. Uh, I put a lot of work into it. But uh, if they all were successes and they all were easy and just bolted together, I don't know. The, I'd get kind of bored with this. I don't know about you guys. Two strokes are fickle, fickle creatures, and uh, that's why I work on them. Wah, 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 wah. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.